Pennsylvania. I'm Mary Mazzola, the Associate Dean of Enrollment and Global Outreach. I'm also an alumna of the Social Work Program. And my preferred pronouns are she, her, and hers. First, I want to congratulate all of our accepted students. So can we give them a round of applause? Hopefully today begins an exciting journey for you. Now, housekeeping. The restrooms are outside on both sides. And I want to talk a little bit about Philadelphia, but specifically about the weather. I am very thankful to Mother Nature for no snow today. I know we have Chicago in the house, North Dakota, Florida, and many of our surrounding states. I wish I could tell you February weather is always so beautiful, but as we know, that's not true. We do have four seasons and a lot to offer in the city of Philadelphia. So today, I have the privilege of introducing our Dean, Dr. John Jackson. Dean Jackson came to the University of Pennsylvania in 2006 as Penn's first PIC professor. So the first test of the day is, who knows what a PIC professor is? Current students cannot respond. <laughs> I'm going to move away from the mic because I think that my voice will carry. PIC professors are Penn Integrates Knowledge Professors. These are distinguished professorships for interdisciplinary scholars who look at real world problems and they look across disciplinary boundaries to find the solutions of the problems. As I mentioned, Dean Jackson was the first pick professor. Today we have 22. Yeah, so you really started at Dean Jackson. Dean Jackson is a renowned cultural anthropologist and ethnographer. He uses film to really look at social problems and impact social change. I can go on and on about the accomplishments of Dean Jackson, but I'm not gonna do that because you really wanna hear him and all that he has to share with you. Dean Jackson is a wonderful individual and a true model to all of us. So without further ado, I welcome Dean Jackson. Good morning. So it's, it's Mary stepped in front of the podium. I'll do the same. Although I know you're you're videotaped tomorrow, so I guess I'll, I'll start to walk around and do my Oprah thing too. So I guess I'll do that too. Um, so it really so thank you. I appreciate the introduction. Um, you know, I do want to say these are for me some of the most exciting events we do as a school um, because in a way, part of what defines us, what constitutes us, are the people we have here. And we take that very seriously. Um, and so the place I want to start is to introduce the prospective students, before I say another word, to the folks who are here, who know this place, who care about the mission of the school. And the school has a mission, which I'll talk about a little bit later. That's our faculty, our staff, and our students. They are the heartbeat of this place. They're special. And being a part of this community, and it includes alumni too, being a part of this community isn't something that you'll do for a year or for two years. Once you come into the fold, we're hoping you'll stay connected and committed to what we do and continue to give back to the folks who come behind you. And that's what the folks who are gonna introduce themselves right now do. They are very invested in your success. We know you're here basically just trying to make the world a little bit better than what you found. And our job is to try to give you the skills, the confidence, the theoretical frameworks, the concepts, the practical ability to do that, to take your ideas, your visions, and translate those into real positive impact in the world. And we think we do a pretty good job at that. And we've been doing it for over 100 years. Um, part of what we're also really sensitive to is the fact that we have to innovate. Right? The way we did it 100 years ago isn't the way we do it now. The 21st century's problems and issues might have a history and a long trajectory, but they're also unprecedented in some ways. They're emergent in some ways. So we need, new, we need new concepts. The old ones don't always take us completely to the finish line to get the answers that we want. 
And so these are the folks here who help you think about what those concepts are. You learn the literature, but your job is to take that and do something with it, right? to make it real, concrete, and practical in the world. Um, so, so while our two stragglers come in and take this, seat, um, I want to ask our faculty, maybe I'll start with the faculty, and ask our faculty who are here to, to stand up and just introduce themselves. Um, they can tell us whatever they want. They just have to be extremely brief. So, so maybe three sentences. You know about what you do, about how you got here, um, and about the kinds of things that you know um, you bring to SB2 that adds to the vitality of this important institution. Um, so we have two folks standing. We'll start with you, Mark, and go. Hi, my name is Mark Stern. Uh, I've been on the faculty since 1980. Uh, I teach in the Social Policy Institute, and I also am co-director of the Urban Studies Program in the School of Art and Design. Thanks, Mark. Director of the Master of Science and Social Policy program. Um, I'm also a proud alum. Um, I did my master's in social work and my PhD um, at this school. Thanks, we we have some more faculty. I guess we'll be on yeah, the way yeah. soon, so that they'll they'll be here soon. And, um, if you don't get a chance to meet them in this broad and open context and forum, make sure you try to find a way when you have a second to introduce yourself to them. Our faculty are exceptional. Um, and I keep forgetting my own pronouns, so they're he, him. Um, and I wear it on my coat every day, um, so folks don't even have to ask me. Part of what you'll realize here is there are a whole bunch of things you learn that you won't even think you needed to know. Some of it will feel like it's stuff that's completely out of the orbit of what you take for granted about the world, but our job is to help you to understand how it's central to some of the questions you care most about, that you treat preciously. Um, our staff are the folks who you'll interact with every single day. Their job is to make sure that as difficult as graduate school is, and that, let me not mince words about this, mm -hmm. it'll, be, it'll be hard. There'll be moments that'll be very difficult, but we have a very talented and expertly staffed who'll get you through it. They've done it before and they can do it. And your job is to call on them, to rely on them. They can anticipate. Right? We know the ebbs and flows of the academic year, but get to know them because they are going to want to help to make sure you're successful. So maybe our staff can stand a little bit and introduce themselves and what they do. Um, and maybe we'll start with you. I'm Adam Rothsacks, I use he and him, and I'm the administrative director of the Nonprofit Leadership Program, uh, and I'm not an alum of SB2, <laughs> but I wish I were. <laughs> Thanks, Adam. current students, the folks who can tell it like it is, really, um, to stand and tell you a little bit about their specialization, their programs, their years, I mean, anything else they think is valuable. So maybe we'll start uh, on the other side. Oh, you're
Good morning, everyone. Welcome. My name is Randall Wilson. I am a recent graduate of the MSW program, very recent, uh, last June, to be exact, 2017. I'm currently enrolled in the Doctorate of Clinical Social Work program, currently looking at the intersection of institutional oppression and child welfare. And I'm a native Philadelphia, go Eagles. <laughs> student, very new to Philadelphia, so I can answer any questions about settling into Philadelphia. <laughs> um, Andrea Taylor, MSRP, full-time student, um, interested in U.S. policies um, concerning immigrants in the U.S., and then also U.S. engagement with countries in the Middle East in terms of social issues. Excellent. Thank you. So what I do want to say really quickly, I won't take up a lot of time, is really used today wisely. So our job is to answer every single question you have about this place as best as we can, um, to give you a sense of what it would feel like to be a matriculating student here, and hopefully convince you this would be the place you can continue your educational advancement. Um, like, clearly, I could do the hard sell, right? Um, I think this is a special place. And for a whole bunch of reasons, I could imagine plying you with all the explanations for why Penn is exceptional. Um, I won't do everything, I won't say everything, but there are at least a couple points I want to make sure you don't miss. The first is it's not a trivial thing that we're at a research one institution like the University of Pennsylvania. So part of what you get when you come to SB2 is you get the totality of the university. Now, it might not sound like that's possible, but our students take advantage of it. And one of the things we tell people is no university, especially none of our peer universities, are geographically configured the way we are. Well, all 12 of our schools are contiguous. So if you walk across uh, Walnut, you can get to the law school, and pretty soon the political science and economics. If you walk across Spruce, you have nursing, you have medicine. So all the conversations we're having are decidedly interdisciplinary conversations. You can't answer them from one silo. And we're structured so that it's easy to get to the interlocutors you need to talk to to answer the big questions you want to answer. We think that's not a superficial thing. So we're a big university, top research one university. You'll take advantage of that. We're also, I think, a very specifically configured school. So we have five programs. And what I always tell people, even though we have five programs, we're one school with one mission, with one vision. Now, we use different literatures, we come from different methodological perspectives, but I think your job is not just to squeeze everything out of the university you can, but do know when you get here, make sure you connect up with folks in other programs. See what you can learn from people interested in some of the same kinds of topics or related topics from a slightly different vantage point, right? from a newfangled perch. That'll also help you to do the kind of work you want to do. We've been placing a premium on what we've called increasing interprofessional confidence and intelligence. How do we make sure that you're learning in ways that allow you to be good partners when you leave, right? So if you're a social worker, you'll know you'll be a part of a team, right? A team that might include nurses, might include teachers, might include medical doctors. So is there a way to do a better job of training you so that you can hit the ground running with the folks you have to partner with when you leave? We're doing much more now including one of our newest innovations, which we call Penn Futures, which is, for us at the university, an unprecedented partnership between SP2, nursing, and education to create more curricular-based contact in the classroom for our students, create more research opportunities for faculty and students across all three of those schools, and also, I think for me, most excitedly, is to configure very purposeful field placement experiences that put our nursing students, our education students, and our SP2 students in the same spaces learning to work together. It's not easy, but if we figure it out while you're still in school, you'll be even more of a leader once you leave. And so that stuff we take very, very seriously, and we think we do it pretty well. 
we're also a place that's very committed to giving students opportunities to formalize their links to other parts of the campus with dual degrees. So we have folks getting dual degrees in everything from public health to law. We have certificates <coughs> in all manner of really specific areas of expertise. So I want you to make sure you look at all those options. You won't be able to take advantage of every one of them. So don't feel bad about that. But figure out what's the best way to configure this place so that it works in service to your specific goals. I always tell people that SB2 is one of Penn's smallest schools. We're the small school that asks the big questions, right? Okay. right? Intractable issues are the things we deal with, the stuff that's been plaguing us forever. And I always tell people we're a pretty smart species. So if the answers to solving the questions were easy, we would have figured out a long time ago. They're hard. But you all have decided to take the hard road to try to see how you can help us to deal with some of these really deep-seated, embedded, and incredibly difficult issues. And our job is to be nimble enough as a relatively small place to give you what you need to maneuver the institution to get what you have to get to be re really well poised to be successful in your league. So that's an important. Take advantage of it. Know that. See what the options are. Talk to one <laughs> another about it. Two other very quick points before I sit down. One is, and this is something Mary brought up earlier, I'm a native New Yorker. I have the hubris that a native New Yorker has. No place in the world is like New York City. I could not leave Philadelphia for New York right now. This is an incredibly exceptional place, and not just because the Eagles are world champions. <laughs> it's a big city that feels really small. We know our students and faculty have an impact on this place that we can feel, that we can measure. And so taking advantage of Philadelphia is incredibly important. Now, the reason why you see that a lot of the staff who work at the school stay at SP2 isn't, I mean, part of it is because the school is fantastic, right, and the folks don't want to leave. Hopefully, if you come, you'll feel the same way. But it's also because people come from different parts of the country and the world, and they fall in love with Philadelphia. It's not called the city of brotherly love, and we say sisterly affection for no reason. <laughs> And so take advantage of being in the city. You'll have to, right, because you'll be learning experientially. But do know that's one of the draws. And I think there's no city like it. Not even New York, which is a place I love. Um, and I think the, the last point I'll make before I sit down is you're only here because we think you can be successful here. Um, so don't be intimidated by Ivy League. And all, like, there's a whole bunch of stuff that comes with elite academic institutions that you shouldn't take on. I do think this is a special place with really important experts. The faculty who were so modest when they stood up are some of the top faculty in the world, not just at the university, in the world at what they do. And they care about the students here. And hopefully you'll be able to tell a little bit of that today, and I can, I can tell you that you will feel that once you get here. Um, so do know this is your day. I'm going to have to run and get my daughter who's doing theater camp, but I'll be right back with her. Um, and just make sure you get all of your questions answered um, until you feel like you have a sense of whether or not this is the place for you. I really do hope that you think it is. So welcome and have a great morning. And I'll see you in a minute. Thank you. to hear him speak, um, kind of sometimes makes me wish I was starting my educational journey over again, <laughs> but I'm not. Um, so <laughs> I want to recognize, um, before we get into our small group discussion activity today, I want to recognize a couple people in the room and have a little bit of fun. Um, we have a history of recognizing our first and our